Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most influential anime series of this generation, and there's a good reason why the anime has been going for so long, even with the new versions of the series. Not only is the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series one of the best ways to introduce people into the new mechanics, and learn how to play the game, but the anime has some pretty crazy duels as well as some very captivating storylines. Many of us grew up watching this anime regardless of whether it was the original one with Yuki, or the Duel Academy with Jaden, or even 5D or Zexel. So with all that in mind and having recently watched back the original anime series, I thought I would do a top 20 list of my favourite Yu-Gi-Oh characters, from the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise and anime series. And with that in mind, I'll be ranking the best characters that the anime has to offer so far. Do keep in mind that this is an opinionated video, and if you don't agree with my list, be sure to leave yours in the comment section below, I would love to hear it. And of course, if you do like this type of content and you would like to see more top 10 videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and of course, like the video. We do also stream over on Twitch, I will leave all the links within the description box below. And with all that said, let's get into our top 20 list. Number 20, Mai Valentine. Mai was probably one of the first competent female duelists that we got to see in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, keeping in mind that especially at the beginning it was far too male-centric, and having Mai in the series helped balance out the playing field a little. Within the series she gave us some memorable duels, including in Duelist Kingdom and in Battle City, which really prolongs a fascinating storyline between her and Joey, when getting captured by Marek. She was always renowned for using her Harpies deck, and she later contributed to the storyline of the Seal of Orichalcos where she had that epic duel against Joey. Number 19, Darts. Darts was the main villain behind the surprisingly good filler called Waking of the Dragons. Similar to how Merrick and Bakura use shadow games, Darts trapped duelists in a game that put their souls at stake. The spell card the Seal of Orichalcos ensured that the duelist who loses the duel would have their souls taken. Darts entire deck was centered around the Orichalcos and it proved to be an incredibly powerful deck. But aside from being a competent duelist, Darts was also the king of Atlantis, the president of the organization named Doma, and the president of his own company, Paradeus. Number 18, Duke Devlin. Duke was one of those characters that didn't really have a lot to add to the series, but he was a fantastic character anyway, and he introduced the Dungeons Dice Monsters game, which was a weird mix between Dungeons and Dragons and Duel Monsters. He was also memorable for making Joey wear that dog costume. Number 17, Mokuba. Mokuba on his own isn't a good character, however he's the only character in the series that shows Seto affection, which I guess is logical being his brother. The personality dynamics between Seto and Mokuba shaped the Kaiba family throughout the series, so although not being so great by himself, he did influence the series in some way. Number 16 is Shizu Ishtar. Shizu was Marek's sister, the wielder of the Millennium Necklace, and one of the more mystical characters in the original anime. She wasn't as much of a skilled duelist as her brother, but her ability to stop his plants and avoid the betrayal of his family was enough to make her memorable. Number 15, Tristan Taylor. Much like Taya Gardner, Tristan never really displayed an interest in duel monsters. He followed his friends wherever dueling took them, cheered them from the sidelines, and provided some comical moments more often than not. Though he's not much of a duelist, Tristan isn't physically weak. In fact, he's quite possibly the strongest of his group of friends. Although when he does pick up a duel disc and a deck of cards, he's mediocre at best. During the Virtual World series, he was easily defeated by one of the big five and subsequently trapped in the body of a robotic monkey. Number 14, Raphael. Raphael was the most powerful and intimidating of the Doma Swordsmen, and not only because he was a large muscular dude with a lot of sideburns, Raphael was able to retain his soul after being defeated in a seal of Orichalcos duel. He was able to see duel monster spirits, and he's one of the select few who actually managed to defeat Yugi. But perhaps Raphael's biggest power was his pure heart, which in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! is of paramount importance. Raphael treated his monsters with respect and care, and harbored no negative emotions with his heart, which prevented the Orichalcos from claiming his soul. He was also strong enough to own up to his mistakes and help Yugi defeat Darts. Number 13, Weevil Underwood. Weevil is probably among everyone's least favorite character with good reasons. Weevil was the character that threw Yu-Gi-Oh's Exodia cards into the ocean, planted a Paradise Parasite card in Joey's deck to cheat his way into victory, and to top it all off, he went against Yu-Gi after he had saved his life. In truth, Weevil was never confident in his abilities as a duelist, and often resorted to cheating in order to claim his victories. Although having done so gave us some great storylines, where the main protagonist would have to find ways of dueling without their best cards, and was a main contributor to some of the storylines, especially in the early days of Duelist Kingdom. You could also arguably include Rex Raptor in the same category, since the two are quite often together. Number 12, 
Zane Truesdale. Arguably one of the best characters in GX, and one of the only three people to have better Jaden Yuki in a duel. Zane's deck throughout the anime compromise of Mechanic Dragons. There was also this weird moment in the anime series where he got revived with no explanation whatsoever. Number 11, Alexis Rhodes. Alexis is a must have on my list. She's one of the anime characters that I really liked when watching the series, and one of the most talented duelists in the academy of GX. She was a member of the Obelisk Blue Dorm, and one of the best duelists of her generation. Although she wasn't one of the most compelling duelists in the series, her skills as a duelist were unparalleled, and her talent was only matched by her academic skills. Number 10, Noah Kaiba. Noah was the only biological son of Seto's father, and while he was as much of a good duelist as he was a jerk, he gains credit where credit's due, as he really knows how to handle himself within the battle arena. And with that said, he was involved in one of the most iconic moments of the original anime series, where Yuki managed to beat Noah himself using Seto's cards. That and he also gave us the Virtual World spin-off series, with the concept of Deck Masters. Number 9, Mako Tsunami. Mako was one of the coolest characters in the original anime series. His duel with Joey and the introduction of the legendary Fisherman were massive parts of the original anime. I think he stands as one of the coolest Yu-Gi-Oh anime characters solely because of his personality. But it's safe to say that his ocean themed deck was one of the many reasons that people really liked him when watching the series. That and in pretty astonishing fashion, he created a memorable moment within the series right at the beginning when Yu-Gi-Oh's giant soldier of stone destroyed his moon, washing up all of his water type monsters. No wonder I never learned how to play the card game correctly as a kid. Number 8, Yusei. Yusei deserves a spot on my list just because of his fantastic personality and his ability to beat almost any duelist that would get in his way. His deck was extraordinary and really showed the true potential of Synchro Monsters. A great character and one of the best protagonists of the series hands down, although the only reason he doesn't really feature higher up on the list is just because I didn't really enjoy the 5D series all that much. But again, that's only just a matter of opinion. Number 7, Joey Wheeler. Joey Wheeler was always the underdog. He kept going up against the impossible odds, stronger opponents, cheating opponents, and even the Egyptian gods, yet he still managed to find a way to pull through. He always rolls with the punches, and always protects the people that he loves. Though it often appears that he relies purely on luck, Joey is much smarter than he initially appears. Although being loud and hot-headed and sarcastic, he's more than capable of backing up the trash talk with his excellent dueling skills. After all, he would have technically defeated Yami Marek, had Marek's shadow game not rendered him unconscious. Because Joey doesn't rely on special abilities and money to win, even the creator Kazuki Takahashi considers him to be one of the strongest characters in the anime. Number 6, Marek. At the start of the Battle City tournament, we're introduced to the Egyptian god cards as well as the main villain Marek Hishtar. The keeper of the Pharaoh's tomb and the leader of the rare hunters, Marek proves to be quite the mastermind and caused a lot of troubles for the main protagonists. His Millennium Rod allowed him to control people's minds, which he often did. But things took a sharp turn for the worse when even darker aspects of his personality, Yami Marek, took control during the final stages of the tournament. His incredibly powerful deck included the mighty Winged Dragon of Ra. He took pleasure in torturing his opponents, and his duels with Mai, Joey, and Yugi really showed how ruthless and dangerous he was. Number 5, Pegasus. Of course, we can't make a list of the most popular Yu-Gi-Oh characters and not include the creator of Duel Masters himself. The president of the Industrial Illusions and the owner of the Millennium Eye is definitely not to be messed with. Appearing as the main antagonist in the Duelist Kingdom era, Pegasus demonstrated the awesome power of his adorable, and at the same time chilling, Toon deck. Naturally being the president of the company that makes the cards, Pegasus also has access to all the very rare and powerful cards in existence, as well as some cards that have never been released to the public. And let's not forget he did also defeat Kaiba, although he did play dirty in doing so. Watching Pegasus made every kid watching the anime want to build a Toon deck until we all realize how bad it was afterwards. Number 4, Yami Bakura. When Marek was finally defeated, we were all wondering where the story would take our protagonists, and who would possibly be even worse than Marek. The answer to that question turned out to be Ancient Egypt and Yami Bakura. During the Duel of the Dawn era, our protagonists found themselves in Ancient Egypt, where Bakura waged war against the Pharaoh. Bakura proved to be a fierce opponent, with a monster strong enough to stand alongside of an Egyptian god card. And during the final shadow game between Yami Yugi and Yami Bakura, Bakura fused with Zork the Dark One, a creature so powerful that it took the combined power of three Egyptian god cards, the creator of light, to finally stop him. Number 3, Jaden Yuki. 
Keeping us entertained throughout the GX series, Jaden's interaction with his friends were amazing, and let's be honest, his deck was something else. His fusions, his elemental heroes, and his combat style meant that Jaden Yuki really embodied the heart and soul of what it means to be to be a passionate duelist. As a member of the Slifer Red Dorm, he started out the series as one of the new guys, but ended up becoming a pivotal member of his academy. Number 2. Yugi Moto Yugi Moto is the spiky-haired protagonist of Yu-Gi-Oh, the owner of the Millennium Puzzle, and thus host of the spirit of the pharaoh, and overall is just a bundle of joy to watch. Although with that said, don't be fooled by his tiny stature and those big eyes, as Yugi Moto is a force to be reckoned with. Though Yugi's had the pharaoh's help throughout most of his duels, he's proven that he can hold his own even without Yami Yugi, as well as dueling against him. In the final series, Yugi defeated Yami Bakura and the pharaoh himself. Yugi may lack confidence in his own skills at times, but that's never stopped him from doing the right thing. Number 1 Seto Kaiba Is there really more of an iconic character than Seto Kaiba? His love-hate relationship with Yugi was probably one of those anime friendships that captivated people throughout the entire series. The smug, pretentious, and rude president of Kaiba Corp is the arch-enemy of Yugi Moto, from who he wishes to take the title of the King of Games. He was without a doubt one of the most powerful and skilled duelists, and that was even before he got hold of Obelisk the Tormentor. Wielding three Blue-Eyes White Dragons, Kaiba is almost unstoppable. His deck is packed with all types of powerful cards, and he stops at nothing to achieve his goals. He was one of the select few who's actually managed to defeat Yugi in a duel. And so there you pretty much have it, that was my top 20 characters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series. As mentioned before, this was an opinionated video, but if you don't agree with this list, be sure to stick your top 20 list in the comment section below, I would love to hear it. And of course, if you do like this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and of course, like the video. With that in mind, if you would like to check out some more top 10 videos, I will leave some more videos in the annotations at the end of this video. Thanks very much again for watching guys, and I will see you all next time.